Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Snowbeck, and today we are going to do Unit 9, Lesson 6, Volume of Pyramids and Cones. So think about pyramids and cones. Um, how do you think the volume of a pyramid compares with a volume of a prism that has the same base area? So imagine the base on this pyramid and the base on this prism. Imagine those are the same size. And then also imagine that this height and this height are the same length as well. How many of these pyramids do you think it would take to fill up the prism? Like let's say I filled this pyramid with chocolate milk. How many of those would it take to fill up the prism? That is the question. So I have a little video here I'm gonna show you. It's about one minute long. Haha, ha, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking jazzy. Yes, I know, I know, right? Okay, so think about it, you guys. It took three, it took one, two, three pyramids to fill up the one prism. So let's try to figure out the formula for this, for volume of a pyramid. Now we remember volume of a prism is area of the base times the height of the object. But one of these pyramids is only gonna fill it one third of the way full. So the volume of a pyramid is one third the area of the base times the height of the object, or many people write it like this. Area of the base times the height of the object divide by three. And this is the formula that I tend to use as I work through problems. Number one, let's try to find the volume of this pyramid. Now to me, this looks like a right rectangular pyramid. The base looks like a rectangle because it's 9.5 by eight. And it does look like it's standing upright. You can kind of tell that from the height. So here we go, volume of a pyramid is area of the base times the height of the object divide by three. Area of the base, well this is a rectangle, so it's gonna be base times height. And when we think about just the base down here, it's going to be 9.5 by eight. So multiply 9.5 by eight and you get 76. And then the height of the object is given to us, it is the nine centimeters. So volume would be 76 times nine divided by three. And that comes out to be 228. And remember for volumes, it's going to be units cubed. So this is centimeters cubed. Number two, let's find the volume of this pyramid. So again, volume for a pyramid is area of the base times the height of the object divided by three. Now normally I would take one look at this and be like, oh no, the base is a hexagon. We must have to do the six steps to find the area of a hexagon. But look, you guys, this is so exciting. They have already worked it out for us. They have done all six steps. They're telling us the area of the base is 22. And then we can see the height. The height is the five. So we have everything we need. So this one's actually really quick, just 22 times five divided by three. And when you multiply that out, it ends up being 36.6 repeating. Um, 36.6 repeating is the same as 36 and two thirds. I, 
I kind of think that's fun to write it like that. And this is going to be centimeters cubed, cubic centimeters. Let's try to find the volume of this pyramid. So volume of a pyramid is area of the base times the height of the object divided by three. This time we have a triangular pyramid. And so the base is a triangle. To find the area of the base, we're gonna have to do little b times little h divided by two, because remember for a triangle, we're gonna have to do the base of it times the height of it divided by two. So in this case, we're gonna do uh, 15 times six divided by two. So six divided by two is three, three times 15 is 45, and that would be feet squared, that's the area of the base. The height is the 14 because it's perpendicular to the base. So we have what we need, yay. So 45 times 14 and then divide by three. And when you type that in, you should get approximately 210 and this is going to be feet cubed, cubic feet. Number four. Brooke is buying a tent that is in the shape of a rectangular pyramid. The base is six feet by eight feet. If the tent holds 88 cubic feet of air, how tall is the tent's center pole? So any of you into camping, maybe you like to go camping in a tent. Um, so this particular tent is in a rectangular pyramid shape. So let's try to draw this. And yes, I want you to draw this too. The base is a rectangle that's six feet by eight feet. And then it's a pyramid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a V and the V is going to be, you know, approximately six feet by eight feet. Then I put a dot up above. And from that dot, I'm going to connect down to the vertices that I have so far. Then I'm going to dot in the two other sides of the rectangle. And then I'm going to connect it up to the top. Now the one strange thing here is this tent has a pole in the center. So kind of an old fashioned tent. It's got a pole there. Maybe I'll make it solid. I suppose it wouldn't be dotted. Um, there it is. There's the pole holding up the center. And we have to figure out how tall is that pole. Now I see some things here. I see pyramid. I see cubic feet. That, thinks, that leads me to think that we're going to be dealing with volume of a pyramid. Volume of a pyramid is area of the base times the height of the object divide by three. I always like to write down my formula. Now fill in what we know. It holds 88 cubic feet of air. 88 is the volume. So V is 88. To get the area of the base, the base is a rectangle. I think we can just multiply six times eight. So that's 48. Okay, so B is 48. The height we don't know, I'll put the letter H next to our height there, and then the divide by three. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do this. You could just divide 48 by three right away. I believe that is 16. Or you could multiply both sides by three and then divide by 48, that would work too. Um, in this case, I would divide by 16. And the height turns out to be 5.5 .5. and so that would be feet. So think about it. If this was your tent, could you stand up straight in it? 5.5 feet, isn't that really 5 feet 6 inches? So if you're less than 5 feet 6 inches, you could stand up in this tent. If you're taller than 5 feet 6 inches, then you would have probably have to hunch over in this tent. I'm 5'4", so I could barely stand up straight if I was right next to the pole. Next, let's talk about finding the volume of a cone. Okay, so think about if you had a cylinder and if you had a cone and they had the same base area, so this circle and this circle were the same, and then they had the same height. So this height and this height were the same. How many of these cones do you take, think it would take to fill up that cylinder? Well, I could play another video, but I'm not going to. Take your best guess. I want you to actually take a guess. How many cones does it take to fill that up? If you guessed three, you are correct. It's the same. It's the same as pyramid to prism. So how would we write this formula? Normally for a cylinder, the volume is pi r squared h. 
And so it would be one third of that. Or the way I write it is I go pi r squared h and then I divide by three. So this is gonna be your formula for volume of a cone. Let's do this. Let's try to find the volume of this cone. Volume for a cone is pi r squared h divided by three. So let's see, do we know the r? Yeah, it's 3.2. Do we know the h? Yep, it's 5.8. We have everything we need. We don't have to solve for anything. We can just plug stuff in. So it's pi 3.2 squared times 5.8 divide by three. And you're gonna probably need a calculator for that. Make sure you use the pi button. And if you're doing it correctly, it should end up being approximately 62.2, and that would be meters cubed. Go ahead and pause the video and try number six on your own. Awesome, so here's my work. If you need to pause and check yours over, go for it. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next question. So those last two are pretty basic. Let's see if we can do one that's a little trickier. Let's try to find the volume of this cone. Our formula is still pi r squared h divided by three. So do we know the r? We do not. Do we know the h? Yes, h is 11. So we need to find the R, and it looks to me like we're gonna have to use SOHCAHTOA. Um, here is the angle we're working with, the 58. The 11 is opposite of that, and the R is adjacent to that. You're gonna have to think about SOHCAHTOA. All right, everybody think for a minute. Which one would you pick? Opposite, adjacent. Opposite and adjacent go with TOA. So you're going to have to go tangent 58 equals 11 over R. Multiply by R because R is on the bottom of your fraction. And so now think about R times tangent 58. You're going to have to divide by tangent 58 to get the R by itself. Whatever you do on one side, do on the other side. These cancel out. So we're left with r equals 11 divided by tangent 58. And go ahead, type that into your calculator. Make sure you're in degrees. Make sure your mode on your calculator is in degrees. If your mode is correct, you should get about 6.9. So our radius is approximately 6.9. Again, you can leave that big decimal in your calculator. That's what I would do, and I would, um, as I type this in, I would just hit, well, let me write it out first. It's gonna be pi 6.9 squared times 11 divided by three. I would leave that 6.9 decimal in my calculator and hit squared and then times pi and then times 11 and then divide by three. And I wouldn't round it at all until the end. And hopefully you're getting around 544.2 and it should be inches cubed. Again, take a minute and actually type those in, make sure they work for you. All right, last but not least, let's see if you can walk yourself through this one. So pause the video and let's see if you can determine what is the radius and what is the height. And then unpause and we'll check if you get them. Okay, so I went from the 30 degree angle and I decided to use SOHCAHTOA. So I had 30 degrees, the five was opposite and the R is adjacent. Opposite and adjacent, the O and the A go with TOA. So I chose tangent. Then I multiply both sides by R and then I divide both sides by tangent 30. And whatever you do on one side, do on the other. And so you wind up with the radius is gonna be five divided by tangent 30. And I believe that comes out to be approximately 8.66. So radius is about 8.66. The height is the five. They give us the height. Okay, we have what we need. Let's plug her in. So volume is gonna be pi 8.66 squared times five divided by three. 
And again, leave that decimal in your calculator if you can and hit times pi times five, divide by three, and it should be approximately 392.7 and it's centimeters cubed. Awesome, you guys. So now I'd like you to try unit nine, practice six. If you get stuck, let me know. Have a great day.